Hi, and welcome everyone. This is Lavender Sky Panther. Today is Wednesday, October 27th, 2021, and today's topic is called Sky Friends. It's a collection of images and sky observations happening October 12th through the 15th, 2021, and this is show number 124. And I have a couple of alternate cover slides coming up here because I like some aspects of each one of these images. For example, this either cutout or presence of some type of triangular craft or technology. And in this one, we have yet again another cloaking triangle. And it looks like a whole fleet of cloaking craft heading from the left of the page over to the right. And it's all happening at a very low uh, altitude in the sky. So it's pretty fascinating. Anyway. Let's get into more. So this is the words, wisdom, and spirit of the day combined with the greetings page. So I'd like to say good day, Osio, how, buongiorno, guten tag, kia ora, jambo, kedu, buenos dias, bonjour, ni hao, tien dobre, konnichiwa, dobronia, anyo aseo, portarji, dobriden, aloha winala, kalimera, hudendag, and good day. Now today's message is coming from Amazonite, and this image in the lower right is coming from the Daily Crystal uh, Inspiration Deck. These Amazon Amazonite pieces up here um, are actually from my own little personal collection. And the overall message um, from this deck is uh, to loosen your grip. Now think about that and think about what that means to you. For me, what comes to mind is just the importance of having a loosened grip on our beliefs and our belief system. So what we believe today is just based on a very specific set of information or experiences. But as we grow and experience more things and learn more things, um, you know, we've got to have room for, for those beliefs to be held loosely so that we can expand and grow further and not hang on too tight to certain things. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Now, Ama, Ama, I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying this today. Amazonite, uh, as far as its properties, I'm just going to read the rest of the page straight out. So if you want to follow along, great. If you're doing stuff around in the background and not looking on the screen, you'll have the audio for it. So Amazonite is a variety of potassium feldspar and is in the mineral, mineral class of microclean or microcline. It is part of the triclinic crystal system and has a vitreous luster. Amazonite comes in shades of purple, gray, green, and blue. Most often it is greenish blue color. The meaning of Amazonite is to soothe anxiety and bring clarity. Now, I have um, the sources where I have taken some of these excerpts from are listed on the page. So it supposedly correlates with the chakras of the heart and throat, the planet Uranus, elements of earth and water, and the vibration number five. Now, this is an interesting little excerpt of somebody's personal experience with Amazonite, uh, Sheila's personal experience with Amazonite. And I thought it interesting and perhaps practical for some people, so I wanted to include this. And I'm going to read this quote. Back when I still had my wisdom teeth, they would sporadically grace me with periods of severe pain. I looked up stones associated with gums and teeth. Amazonite was one of the crystals recommended for teeth pain, I then used a tumbled Amazonite stone program to alleviate the throbbing pain held against my jaw and focused on the non-painful side of the mouth. Although Amazonite could not solve the problem caused by the wisdom teeth crowding my mouth, it provided me with temporary relief. This stone allowed me focus on self-healing rather than the pain. This traumatic time left me with a fond memory of Amazonite. And I'd like to say something here too. There is a difference between when we look at the raw crystal here or even here versus the tumble that's the smooth and you know often polished shiny um, form of the Amazonite. And for some people, I guess the tumbled works better. I like for if there's any healing things involved, excuse my voice for a minute. Um, if there are anything, you know, if you're using these for healing, I just feel a better energy, more powerful, you know, thing coming uh, c coming from the raw crystal, the non-tumbled form. But this is that's a very personal thing, and as always with any of these things, you just see what matches your own frequency and resonance, and what you think will help the most. And that's just something you intuitively feel when you pick up the stone uh, and hold it and, and see what you're going to do. Now she mentions it was programmed to alleviate the throbbing pain, so. What you do is just put your intention into these things if you're not familiar with this. And there are many ways to go about it. This is just my personal interpretation. Uh, you know, you just take the crystal and hold it and you program it by just, you know, closing your eyes, almost like a telepathic thing. And you can like hold it up to your heart or heart space 
and just kind of emanate out, you know, the feeling of what you want to, to accomplish. Or, you know, I guess some people you can hold it up toward your third eye. Or in this case, if it's a painful side of the mouth, you could even hold it up near the mouth and put the intention in for healing. I'm sure there are many other ways to do this. Just That's just the one that comes naturally to me and makes sense to me. Anyway, I invite you, if you haven't done this already, to uh, get to know these crystals and look up um, either medical, metaphysical meanings or healing properties, even just on the Internet, spiritual meanings. Those are great little subtopics to just uh, do a search and then put in the name of the stone that you're interested in. And there's so much more information on these things uh, available, you know, on the Internet. Anyway, have fun looking around and good luck with whatever uh, crystal you are choosing to work with. All right, so now we're going to get into the sky observations part of the show. And if you're new or returning to the channel here, I thank you very much for being here. I really do appreciate you and any time that you can give on any of these shows, whether it's the whole thing or even if you're just hopping in for a bit. Now, um, if you are new, I'm not going to go through my whole intro of what I'm doing here and why. Uh, but the real short gist of it is that I am uh, taking, you know, taking a look around me, 360 in the skies on a daily basis. Um, just, you know, a couple minutes a day, maybe periodically throughout the day, just go out. If either something feels like something's going on up in the sky or I just, you know, go out and observe and see if I see anything um, in particular unusual or strange, you know, different anomalies going on. So ever since 2018, I've noticed um, a real, you know, sharp increase in strange things happening in the skies. I first got a little glimpse of that in 2014, maybe even 2012, but I kind of just brushed it off, didn't really think about it. Um, but something came to my attention in 2018, an event that, you know, called me to, to start really paying attention, and I have been ever since. So I'm just sharing, you know, documenting what I see in the skies in any given time frame, in this case, October 12th through the 15th. I'm on actually a little mission to catch up, so more shows are going to come out even more this week until I can get caught up to date. But anyway, I look around, take some photos just on a camera phone, uh, Android, and then I take the original photo, and I enhance it to highlight, you know, what I can see with the naked eye with, with what I suspect is going on. And I do that um, when I say enhanced photo, that's simply editing attributes of the photo, such as color saturation, brightness and contrast, maybe color temperature, maybe sharpness if needed. And that's it. And I invite you to do the same if you're not doing it already. Just start taking pictures. I do the... Um, editing of the attributes just on PowerPoint itself. And so anyway, you'll see what I mean in a minute when I talk about how highlighting or drawing out different aspects of the of the sky that I felt was going on or saw was going on. So here we go. Here's one such example. Oh, and, and when I say cloud in quotes in the lower right hand lower right hand corner, I'm talking about suspected cloaking craft activity. And again, look at my previous shows to see even more what I mean about that, and you're going to get the gist also as we go through the show. So anyway, I'm looking to the northwest uh, in the morning, and I see these strange parallel, near parallel lines, you know, seem to be forming a pattern, and then, <laughs> sorry about my voice cracking, and then again, like, um, you know, a pattern here, and then this coming in at a strange angle, looking very geometric. Um, so here we go with some enhancement. It got real interesting, some pattern work here. This even seems to be making a spherical shape or a circle, you know, in the sky with texture in it. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. And with this patterning down here too, it's looking like very much like structure popping up with shadow and everything. So I'm not exactly sure how it is a cloak and craft, but I am suspecting cloak and craft activity in here. Now, in this case, I'm looking to the south still in the morning and just found, you know, some of these forms, you know, kind of off these little bits and pieces, looking a little strange, looking like they had some uh, intelligent design to them because these look like the end of tubes. And we're going to zoom in. You know, that's where I saw it kind of look like the end. These two holes might be like the end of tubular forms. And, you know, looking at it again, couldn't get at too much more, but it does look like something of intelligent design that's moving through the sky that doesn't look like, in any case, natural cloud form. Then we get to this thing, looking west toward the evening, and uh, I was coming out of a place, out of a parking lot, and noticed this. It was really literally in my face. You can see the scale of this thing. It looked weird. It was, you know, choppy and fuzzy to the naked eye, which is what I call the staccato, staccato cloud activity or staccato effect, meaning, you know, choppy and dissonant. And, um, 
Yeah, it was diving down. So on the right hand side, you know, it looks strange to the naked eye on the left, but on the right, when I put enhancement, uh, we see the color signature, like a really warm, you know, red pink. And I invite you also to look at the um, description box below. I talk about what could be causing the red pinks in the sky. In this case, I think it's just a localized cloak and craft that's generating that uh, color signature, either just by virtue of how this craft operates or it does it intentionally, sends out electromagnetic, <laughs> electromagnetic wave activity or some type of other frequencies to disturb the atmosphere to help it cloak is what I'm thinking, or a combination of both. Now in this case, we start to see structures popping up out of this thing, so like stick-like things um, with definite body and like volume and shape to them with shadow and highlight parts. And then, you know, over here, there's a, there's a triangular form cloaking. And I'm going to talk about cloaking materials. Sometimes I'll refer to it as plasma, just meaning uh, something denser than water vapor that kind of hangs around in the sky. Anyway, this one was just really bizarre. And also the altitude, again, it was just extremely low. Now, this one is looking to the east in a different part of town. And this just looks strange, the movement. Like, if you see this, it looks like almost a trail that belongs to this thing that just kind of popped out, popped up on the on the screen here and then like zoomed down this way. And then there's a clear separation line here between this and whatever's going on here. So a very clean one. So we look to the right with enhancement and I didn't get at too much more other than, you know, this really is strange. And actually I did get to a little bit more because this now almost looks like a wishbone effect, you know, with, with one or like a prong, almost like forceps, you know, one prong this way, one prong this way. Uh, that has solidity to it, and then this thing like uh, tethered to it, this ball, really weird. C.1 is looking like a triangular form as well. Let's see what you think's going on in there. We're going to zoom in on that ball figure, and actually, I don't, yeah, we are, okay. I, I was just seeing if my letters were updated. So we, we have this ball figure, and we have this separation line. It looks a little too neat and clean just to be haphazard. We start to see triangular forms as well, and with some enhancement, here at B.1, that's definitely a triangular form. You know, again, as I always say in all my shows, that just doesn't happen in a natural cloud system to have a perfect, you know, straight edges and symmetry and in the form of a triangle uh, up here too. Um, there seem to be other weird little cloaking crafts or objects, that, you know, that could be some type of instrumentation or sensors, you know, who knows, if not a piloted little mini craft of some type. And then this thing, that spherical thing, is just looking strange. Look, we have a, a straight edge at the bottom and a straight angle on one side, straight angle on the other. So, again, you can't have a natural forming cloud, at least. Uh, I've been on this planet for many decades. That has not been the case until recently. Some of this stuff is popping up literally in the skies. So I'm going to call that cloaking craft. Okay, this one, we're looking east again in the morning. And just a weird thing happening around here at B caught my attention. And this strange hole effect punched out in this, whatever's going on here, blocking the um, ability to see a you know, view of the sun, quote-unquote sun coming up. And once again, I invite all of you to look up solar simulator and artificial sun, um, because I'm going to use sun in quotes of what's going on here. You know, it's no accident that this parks immediately in front of where the quote-unquote sun is supposed to be coming up. Um, anyway, we have, you know, a little bit with this enhancement on the right, we see a little bit more happening in here. Something really bizarre happening in here that's absolutely looking like a cloaking craft. Uh, let me see if we zoom in. We zoom in on the hole, um, you know, punched out in that cloud. And I was just trying to get to, you know, can we see any more evidence of what's going on with that hole? But actually, if you look at D.2 and go straight down, we see a whole host of things. These look like almost like grapes on a vine, but like craft, you know, maybe docked in on something because, you know, we have a clean shape here, another like rhomboid here, rhombus shape, triangular shape. You know, this one's rectangular. I don't know what this is, maybe spherical, but just really bizarre hard edge shapes. So again, is it technology? Are they cloaking craft? Uh, you be the judge on that one. And then this one, we're going to go back up. Uh, let me show you here. We're going to look at this B area where my cursor is flying around. We're going to take a look at that and zoom in on that. And when I get to this, I'm calling it B.3 because we zoom in more with some more enhancement. It just looks strange. So again, this isn't natural cloud formation. This is a very straight edge if you're following my cursor right there. It looks actually like a pipe or a tube. So I'm calling that intelligent design of some type and cloaking craft or objects. 
Now this is looking east, and what caught my attention was this cutout over here on the left. So we look to the right with enhancement. We get some interesting red-pink color signatures. So again, that tells me something local is being generated in here that's cloaking to get that color signature. And then again, look how clean these lines are. Straight line here, straight line here, symmetrical triangle. Cannot be a natural cloud formation. Okay, this one gets interesting also looking east. So now the sun's... um. Actually, I don't even know. It was really strange what was happening with the sun this morning. <laughs> it was moving all over the place in weird ways. But what caught my attention on this one was the ABCD cluster here. These weird little shapes. So one's going level, one's kind of coming downward. This is on a sharper angle, all at different angles from each other, really. And so with some enhancement, taking a look at them, and I start to see a pipe-like form over here at C.1. So we zoom in real tight. Now this is going to be a little bit mappy and grainy. Um, especially if you're looking at it on a laptop. Um, but just squint your eyes. If you have this on a bigger format, like a laptop screen, you might want to just squint your eyes to see better what I'm seeing. But this is definitely an engineered form, you know, with a long tube. That's an opening, you know, a shadow to it. This also starts to look like craft, pitching down there at A.2 and also at B.2. Uh, D.2, I don't know what it is. It's really tiny. So I don't know if that's like a companion sensor or something that flies along with this thing or a piece of this overall thing popping back up out of heavy cloak. I mean, this is at quite a distance. I'm amazed my camera even picked this up. We also start to see a shadow line of something here. So it's, it's very interesting what's going on in there. See what you think you see. Then um, this is looking at a weird sharp, sharp angle. Like what cloud does that? Nothing does. <laughs> Nothing that's natural anyway. So this is absolutely artificial cloud activity. Look how clean that line is. Um, it also could be, when you look at the right-hand side and follow my cursor, this also could be a border edge to some type of huge craft that's making that imprint. So I'm not sure which is the case. Anyway, we look at all these little fragments start to make distinct shapes when we look at the right-hand side. Triangular forms, and, you know, I don't know what's going on in here, but it's almost like this is a craft, because look at this perfectly round shape, and these could be little tubes or pipes coming toward us. Uh, like this would be the, the bow and the front of it, you know, and this would be like the um, where you pilot it. I don't know. See what you think is going on? It's really bizarre. Okay, now this is looking west toward the evening, and this just looks strange, you know, to me, like there could be something triangular in form hiding back in here while we have this thing, you know, coming straight level. And then weird smudge out showing me movement, weird things like these are standalone objects. So we look with enhancement, and it does kind of prove what I was, you know, feeling with this one. Look how dark and how symmetrical that object is. And this one looks like a downturn triangle, um, you know, with cloaking substance around it. Then we have this one, which looks like a triangular form with a hole cut in it. And look at this trail. It looks like this thing just zoomed in, taking this huge billowing trail with it and just kind of sitting here. And look at straight line here, again, more or less straight lines forming a perfect triangle or trapezoid. So we're going to look at it with enhancement and, you know, it's even more apparent. I'm going to keep moving because we have more to cover. Now this one, um, the little object here, figure it A, caught my attention. So we look to the right hand side and it looks even more interesting. We're going to zoom in on it again. So does this area over here at B.1. This too looks like a triangular form or part of a bigger assembly. And then we get some really interesting color variation in here. So look at these golds and greens and then at the same time some reds and pinks. Um, so again, look at my uh, description box below for what could be generating that red and pink color. Now I'm zooming in on that little fragment and here we go. It's got some interesting texture to it. It's got like a little hole or some penetration on the side. Um, this is raised and sticking out. Looks like it has shadow. So this, in, in, instead of being a really engineered piece, it might be, but it's taken a very organic direction, but still seems to have some type of intelligence behind it engineering this thing. Uh, see what you think. Okay, now this is the original slide, and this is going to become the one that I have on the, uh, as an alternate cover slide in the beginning. But look at this. That is a clear triangular shape. That's it cut out. There's got to be intelligence involved with that. And I'm going to go back one. So this is looking to the southwest in the morning. And this whole thing just welled up. This whole thing looks extremely artificial. 
um, as far as very artificial cloud uh, consistency and up in here it's all ragtag and doesn't really even make sense as a cloud form and um, it also had this kind of ethereal white white blue light happening kind of glowing from the background and that always tells me there's some type of um, craft activity cloak and craft afoot when I see that and feel it and sense it and anyway in the fact that we see again pure triangular form just really informs that something very otherworldly is happening with this quote-unquote cloud now in this one when we look at 8.1 we start to see even a darker form with like cloaking material and very staccato cloud effect happening all over it we have a darker body happening at b.1 something floating looks like an object being cloaked at c.1 other stuff hiding behind this very thick mist um, it looks like maybe a triangular point here as well so see what you think is going on this is also very interesting this shape this cross shape so no way in you know a natural cloud formation are you going to have something that's cross like you know perpendicular elements to each other um, but see what you think is going on and i'm sure you're going to find a lot more like i say in any given photo i'm not going to be able to cover it all there's just sometimes simply too much happening and if i inadvertently miss something big like you know the elephant in the room if i'm like oh if, if, if i miss something and you say why didn't she cover it it's sitting right there sometimes i honestly just miss stuff because i am narrating the show on a laptop version like a bigger bigger image and um, if i look down at a cell phone after i record the show and play it back there it's you know smaller format and you definitely see different things depending on whether you're looking at it a large scale or small scale so I often invite you to toggle back and forth if you if you're fortunate enough to have a laptop and a cell phone handy um, have them playing at the same time and then like look up at the bigger scale look down at the, the smaller scale and you're gonna see totally different things coming out at you so this is weird too this darker form coming in here and cutting down it's just very precise with very clean lines so to me that's also tech of some kind and here there's like a cutout of it, a roundish form so I think this whole thing is a cloak and craft in here there even seems to be a circular element here so I'm gonna call this like the front I'm not sure what these are doing, if they're an element of this overall craft or they just happen to be flying in front of it. But see what you think. We're going to zoom in on that uh, triangular element at D.2 and D.3. Here it is with some enhancement. And then we see there's even a secondary triangle like uh, piggybacking on it. And we follow down and now there's another triangle going at a complete opposite angle the other way. With looks like some uh, really technical components like pipes or things happening here at the tip. So once again, see what you think is going on. There is like something here that looks like a cloak and craft, something here as well, a little smudged out, but present, you can see it. See what you can find in this and see what you think. Okay, this was interesting. I just felt something strange moving along in here. Again, a lot of this is visual and a lot of it is a combination of you just sense something is going on. And this one gets very interesting. So look at B.1. I love the way this is emerging. There is a pipe, a hole here. You know, it's the edge of some type of pipe or, you know, this looks like a technical element, a designed element, machine part popping up out of an overall craft where this would be a triangular formed craft. Um, maybe this is like the command deck or whatever happening up in here. But what's really weird with this one is look at this burst of yellow green. So, and, and all of this like trailing down so low in the sky. And then these two little elements at C1 and D1 look like little companion craft or they flew out of this thing or off the deck of this overall ship. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, we're zooming in on those two little elements below and look at them. They have structure to them. There is something definitely going on there. I'm not sure what this is, if it's like uh, something they're docked to on the ship or just a trail of some kind of vapor from something else. See what you think. But I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm looking at these two little things down here. Anyway. Uh, see what you think. This one gets really interesting. Hold on one second. This is looking south in the morning and I just saw a darker shape emerging. Once again a lot of this is intuitive and, and also visual. I just saw and felt something was weird here and bam look at that with enhancement we see why. Perfect triangular form straight edge on the back. I'm calling that the back and that the bow. Another weird little shape faintly, you know, emerging or hiding in, the, in this material, whatever it is, it's artificial cloud. And something happening interesting back in here. 
Then looking this way, what caught my attention on this one was A. It's a darker color right next to this bright white stuff, and it's immediately next to each other. So there's no way this could have even been caused by a trick of light from the sun setting nearby. Um, this is just strange. So of course it caught my attention, and of course we're going to look at it with enhancement. And you can see a pure triangular form here. Something weird happening over in here where my cursor is. And then, of course, then this just different, totally different form. So I'm saying there's some type of cloak and craft that work in here, especially here. Something seems to be fading out or fading in to view. All right, this one is now looking east. And this gets very interesting because this will key into the next show coming up on deck on top of this one. Is look at form A and A.1. I caught something very similar on a different day that's going to pop up in the next show after this. Um, so just put a little footnote, you know, a little reminder to yourself to check that out. In the meantime, uh, it just looked odd. You know, it has symmetry to it. It has sharp edges coming down. So it shows me tech is at work there as well. I'm not sure what's happening up in here. Uh, I'm going to leave this to you to look at further on your own to see what's going on. I just tagged a few things. This looks weird. It looks like two legs of something. It's all blurry, meaning there's movement. Something weird happening at B.1 as well. Uh, see what you can find in this image. I'm zooming in a little bit more to show this piece I was talking about. And I was trying to see if I could get any more features off this thing by zooming in. And really, not too much more, but it just reinforces that thing is, this thing is more or less symmetrical and has pure straight edges to it. So look at that right angle. Um, and that's not going to happen in a natural cloud system. So yeah, that's tech of some kind. OK, now this is looking north northeast in the morning. And on this one, things were starting to feel a little weird. So let's just hop right to the enhanced version. This notch out, cut out, whatever's happening within the cloud was really strange. So is that a tailpiece? Like if this is, um, see this straight line and this straight line where my cursor is? Like if you imagine this is the back of a manta ray or stingray, it's kind of what it's looking like. So this like curved, that would be a curved wing and then the back and then like the tail. So is this part, this whole thing looking like a sky imprint, but is it really an object cloaking that's a bigger craft? Or is it a cutout in here? I, I can't tell you. I'm not sure. See what you think. Um, then look at this like S-like form. You know, again, that doesn't occur in a natural cloud. And this has like a straight edge. And then this weird tubular thing, snake-like thing happening below. And then this thing, it's also bizarre. So we're going to zoom in on this part. And here we go. Look at this form. You know, is this several different pieces perhaps? Whatever the case, this this... You're not going to have any part of a cloud, you know, go this way, double back, and then come back on itself. And this is a very straight line over at B.2, and it has a more vertical direction, and then this piece is like, you know, coming perpendicular to it, and that's also not going to happen in a natural cloud formation. And I have no idea what's going on at C.2. See what you think. And as always, I invite you to feel free to leave a comment if you want in the comment section below. If you have any thoughts on what this could be, whether it's based on any kind of logic or, or, you know, just for fun, some fantastical idea like, hey, that looks like a whatever, you know. Anyway, I'm going to move on. So left and right, left is the original, right's the enhanced version. So I'm looking at A, and I have B flagged. I can't remember exactly why. <laughs> I think it was just this for this overall shape. But anyway, A.1 gets real appearance. On the left, the original, the right, look at that. Bam, it just lights up. This looks like, again, a triangular form with like wings at each side. It's symmetrical in any case. Looks engineered. And this piece, too, up here looks very engineered, whatever this thing is. Doesn't look natural, like a natural cloud in any case. And then here, it looks like a, the edge of a stick-like thing is, is coming through the fog, so to speak, toward us. So I'm not sure what's going on there but it looks like a machine part to me. Then we have this scene looking north in the morning on a different day. And this just stood out, you know, this is all within proximity to each other. And yet this is really dark and looking triangular shaped. And something looked like it was hiding, you know, wanting to emerge out of here as well. We look at it with enhancement. Don't get too much more at what's going on, but look at this pure curve. You know, definitely that's, that's not a natural cloud. So it's gotta be some type of cloak and craft or object. All right, now we're looking up and a little toward the south in the afternoon. 
And look at this just wide out of the quote unquote sun. Um, I'm definitely calling this uh, solar simulator or artificial sun or the effects of one. Uh, look how white and glaring that is. It's not a natural sun. Then we get all this weird, unnatural cloud, quote unquote, cloud activity happening around it. So we're going to look at it with enhancement. I really blew it out just to get at what was going on over here, this outcropping. And then we see a little bit more of what's going on at C.1 um, and A.1. Something is happening in the back at B.1 as well. And then we're going to look downward at what's happening below a little bit more. And now we start to see triangular cutouts at D.2 and at G hiding back in there and even at, over here at F. And some extra enhancement reveals that, yes, we have these triangular cutouts. And then at H.1 over here, it looks like a bigger cutout or a uh, cloak and craft sitting there, this extra, you know, purple color. So actually this, this little thing I thought was a standalone cutout triangle, I think it's just the ed, end corner you know, one of the three corners of a bigger craft sitting there. Uh, see what you think. There's a lot of weird stuff. I'm going to leave this to you to have a look at your own time. See what more you can find. Look at this interesting ridge line. It's all really strange. And down at E.1, these look like standalone craft because a cloud wouldn't do that with, you know, right next to some kind of quote-unquote cloud formation like this. Okay, this one gets interesting. It saw some strange, you know, again, the thought like this might be part of a triangular cutout over here, weird smudge-like stuff happening over here. Um, so we look with enhancement, and yes, it seems to be a bigger cutout of a triangular form here. Straight line here, so this looks like a triangular form that's being backlit a little bit at C.1. D.1 has its own little outcropping with a very straight edge, more of a rectangular form, next to E.1, which is a triangular form. Or maybe a diamond form if you bring it all the way down. Either way, these are not natural shapes. Look at this. Straight edge, straight edge, symmetrical. Does not happen in a natural cloud system. We even have a, an exact rectangular form here as well. So I'm going to say this is riddled with cloak and craft activity, especially since we have the staccato effect here again, where it's choppy and fuzzy. Whereas, you know, even to the human eye, whereas everything else is in focus around it. Um, there might be some vapor trail, meaning like some of this came flying in from the upper right-hand corner of the of the screen here. But see what you think. Again, we have the red-pink signature. This is looking northwest, a little more north. And um, that really shouldn't be happening there. It should be happening more to the west, if at all. And uh, once again, look at the description box below for what could be causing the red-pink signature. Hang on one second. Okay, and this one's looking northwest, and again, started to look odd because we get some movement coming streaming down this way, and again, odd, like, odd shape form. In this case, kind of pear shaped, I guess, um, sitting on top of something else with things coming in at different angles and sharp lines. So we look at it with enhancement, and this is what I get. Uh, very strange overall um, happening. I'm just gonna say, and I'm absolutely suspecting cloak and craft going on in there. Uh, hang on one more second, sorry. Okay, I'm back. And looking northwest, this looked weird. Um, actually, sorry, this is looking south. I didn't update this at the title. But anyway, you know, standalone little objects seeming to have, uh, a B seems to have a little bit of a triangular form to it. Definitely something weird happening at D that's not a natural cloud. So with enhancement, you can see this a little bit better now. These are going to be grainy as we get later into the evening because my camera phone can only pick up so much when it starts to get dim, darker outside. Uh, but still, it's you know picks up enough for us to pick out some of these shapes. And now we've got the red-pink color signature once again. And look at this. At D.1, it's almost like um, that's a thumb at the bottom and, and knuckles at D.1 and fingers. It almost looks like... Uh, arm like this would be the wrist and you know arm is coming out of this bush and like grabbing something It's just really weird. C.1 there's an object under heavy cloak B.1 we get our triangular form again, you know look at this triangular form down here and cloaking material That's got to be cloaking craft or cloaking objects of some kind Then same thing here. So look at this it looks like we have a little trail of this B element zooming across and then look at these things. You know, we even have the white highlight parts, which tell me there's absolutely cloaking technology um, involved, you know, cloaking some type of um, object. And then this little grouping of three things, you know, 
this little thing off on its own, everything was starting to look really strange. So with enhancement, we see why. Look at 8.1, looks like it zoomed in this way, this triangular cloak and craft. Um, C.1, come on, that's really obvious. <laughs> um, B.1, I couldn't really, you know, get at what's going on behind this, this masked out, but look how perfect the lower line is. Now this too is coming straight across. And this is what I'm saying. This looks like an overall craft to me with like two long sticks or pipes, pipe-like machine parts coming off the front. And what's really weird too is it all seems to be moving in formation this way or nearly this way, like coming in from the top left corner of the um, of the picture, you know, swooping down and coming across level, but they all seem to be heading in the same direction. So that one was really weird, especially because it's so low in the sky. Okay, now this one is fun. Um, I did not expect to see this. So I took the image on the left and I thought that was weird and I'm like, okay, that's got to be a cloak and craft. Look at the shape of it. You know, it's kind of got a, a pointed ellipse type effect to it and it has this movement coming down, you know, like, like it zoomed into the page. But then what I didn't really pick up on was look what's happening below it. So with some enhancement, bam, I didn't expect to see this red pink, you know, signature so vibrant. And then look at this thing. What is this? What are these things radiating out? That is just not natural in any natural cloud system. And then these two little things are kind of suspect as being cloak and craft as well, because where my cursor is, it's got a near right angle happening in there. Uh, see what you think is going on. Uh, I'm not, I'm really kind of stumped on that one. All right, this is looking northwest. Again, what caught my attention was this thing kind of streaming in down onto the page at A, the weird nature of this artificial looking cloud in the lower left of the photo. Um, you know, really bizarre what's happening with the profile of what's supposed to be a cloud. Clouds don't do that. Um, this is weird too, these little cutouts where my cursor is and the movement, you know, this way. Just all of it was so strange. And here's with some enhancement. And this reinforces that what I was seeing kind of streaming in is a little standalone object. It's got its own color signature. And then again, we just get more questions and answers on this thing because, you know, what the heck is going on with this profile of a quote unquote cloud? And what the heck is this thing doing? So I think B.1 is also a standalone kind of cloaking object. And whatever's going on in here is extremely intriguing. I can't tell too much more what's going on, but it, it's not natural. It's designed. Okay, this is, gets a little blurry because once again, now we're getting really dark and my camera phone can only do so much. But I still could see, look at this cloud. It's like squiggling down in here and then this is a pure curve. So I did what I could and it looks like an imprint of something happening here and up here. So we look at the right hand side and look at this. This looks like an imprint, like it comes down to a point, comes back over here and it looks symmetrical. So I think that's a cloaking object. I'm not exactly sure what's going on in here, but I think something flew in and downward into here. It's very intriguing. I have no idea what this thing is doing. See what you think is happening. It's gorgeous as a visual, but I, I don't know what's going on, but I know there's not natural activity happening in there. All right, well, this is the photo of the day and the close of the show. This is a fun one because there's a sign that says, all pets must be kept on leash. Please clean up after your pet. And this is a little baby Ibis who's just looking off the other way like, oh, hell no, I'm not participating in this. <laughs> so I'm a free range, you know, free being. So I want to say thank you for free thinking and standing by here a while. And this is really an important mes message actually on the scene. So an important message coming from a beautiful baby Ibis. Um, and it is this. Are you a pet? Are you letting yourself be leashed? If so... Why? And of course, I'm talking about what's going on with the bigger picture in the world right now. Are you letting yourself be leashed? And why would you do that? Why are you listening to people trying to put a leash on you? <laughs> I'm going to leave it at there for now. Oh, I have a little typo. It should be an I in there. Anyway, don't be leashed. You know, be free. Be like this little ibis here. And I know it's a baby ibis because they have the, the brownish feathers still. And then eventually it will become all white. So anyway, that's it for now. Have a beautiful right now. I wish you all the best and tremendous peace and love. And until next time, which will be very soon, I have another show coming on after this, either today or tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Lavender Sky Panther. Bye.